Hey, well, welcome back to Understanding the Next Generation. I'm Jeff Baxter. I'm the Next Gen Pastor at Mission Hills Church here in Littleton, Colorado. I'm so glad you're tuning in. Let's talk about purpose or vision or the ultimate goal for local church student ministry today. I'm specifically talking about the local church, not parachurch ministries. I love parachurch ministries, but they have different goals, different ultimate purposes that they're trying to figure out. I'm talking specifically to youth directors, parents, pastors, um, youth student ministry pastors, or anybody around that team, or student ministry volunteers, or serve team members. Uh, I'm talking about to all of you, what's the ultimate purpose or goal for local church student ministry? Well, first of all, let's talk about what it's not. Here are some of the things that are not the primary purpose for student ministry in the local church to keep students happy and busy and safe all the time. That is not the end goal, just to keep everybody happy because that doesn't work in my own family all the time, let alone in any local church or student ministries. That can't be the end goal, to keep people happy. Safety is important, of course, in student ministry, but that can't be the end goal, just to keep people safe. How about another one? To grow a large youth ministry. That can't be the end product. To grow the biggest, largest youth ministry you possibly can. I know there might be pressure for on you from senior pastors and bosses above you, but that can't be the primary goal to grow really large youth ministries because you can bring the right person in to grow a really big youth ministry, but it's very shallow. and So that can't be the, the end product. Success in youth ministry does not mean size. Here's another one to help students believe in Jesus. Oh my goodness, yes, that's super important to help students come to know Jesus as their Savior. But is that the primary goal? Because if that was the primary goal, then as soon as they came to know Jesus, they don't need to come back anymore. They already know Jesus. So that can't be the primary goal. Or to create programs that all the youth like, that's impossible, can't be the primary goal. To have really deep Bible studies with students. Oh my goodness, the buzzword of the day is depth, deep. That wasn't deep enough. That was too deep. That was over my head. I'm deep, 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 deep. I mean, that can't be the end product to have really deep Bible studies. It just can't because if that was the end product for student ministries, then just to dig in deep and learn the Greek heiress passive tense of those verbs would be what they want. But we know that is not what they want. Or here's another one to create safe places where students can vent their frustrations. So you just create authenticity and vulnerability for them to be able to share their deepest, darkest secrets and maybe even their sins. And then we think, man, that was so rich and so good. And that's important, but it can't be the primary purpose for local church student ministry or to help students only grow in their individual relationship with Jesus. Only grow. I mean, individual discipleship is important, but that can't be the end product of why we do what we do or to create the best youth ministry in town. No, nope, that can't be the primary purpose, like we're in competition with other churches. That can't be it. Or to separate students from the larger church. You might think I'm crazy on this, but that can't be the primary purpose. But boy, do we act like that. We have separate youth buildings, separate youth rooms, separate youth things. And it's almost like our goal is to separate youth or students from the main large church or to pair one adult up with students in a small group. That's the goal. If we get every single student in a small group with another caring, Christ-following adult, that's the end goal. That can't be the end goal of everything. That can't be the main goal for every student just to be in a small group. That falls short, it seems. Or how about this? To intentionally or unintentionally separate students from their parents. Oh, we don't intentionally necessarily do that. But unintentionally, are we creating spaces where it seems like our primary purpose is to separate students from their parents in order to, well, have, have fun and enjoy their time? And, and sometimes, if we're, we're not careful, sometimes we can indirectly communicate to these students that our goal is to have them not connect with their parents. As a matter of fact, their parents might be the enemy. Well, that can't be the end product, the end purpose, the vision for student ministry or to ignore what's happening in the larger church. Sometimes indirectly, again, we 
don't talk about the large church. We separate from the large church. We don't go to the worship service. We don't get involved in other programs in the church or events or ministries. We have our own ministry. So it almost seems like the purpose is to separate students from the larger church or to keep parents informed of programs and events. Is that the primary purpose? Just to keep parents informed of what's going on. That's important. Communicating to parents is super important. But it can't be the primary goal, can it? Or here's a final one that's, that's definitely not. To equip students to share Jesus with their friends. Is that important? Yes. But is that the primary goal of local church student ministry? To have them be equipped to share their faith with their friends? That can't be the primary purpose. Important? Yes. One of your goals? Absolutely. But the primary purpose? Can you think of anything else that would, would not be the primary purpose for student ministry? Boy, I could go on and on and on. I'm sure you could think of some things too. But So what is the primary purpose for student ministry? Let me walk through this for just a few minutes. And then I'm going to let you chew on it and leave your comments. And let's interact about this. What's the primary goal, purpose, vision for student ministry? Here you go. Here's a working definition. We exist, your student ministry, exists to help students become mature Jesus-following adults who are connected to the church family. There it is. We exist to help students become mature Jesus-following adults who are connected to the church family. So we exist, our primary goal, our purpose, our vision. We exist, this is our end game. This is why we exist. It's our vision of our student ministry, to help. You guys, we, we need to get over ourselves. We are only part of what's going on in a student's life. If you're a small group leader, thank you for serving in that way, but you're just part of the deal. If you're a youth pastor or director, you're just part of the deal. Parents have much more time and influence on kids than we ever think we will, so they're a part of the deal too, or coaches or counselors or friends or teachers. They're all part of surrounding, helping students. Help them do what? To mature as Jesus-following adults. I mean, we're, if you're an adult watching this, and you probably are, we're still trying to mature. We're still trying to become like Jesus and join him on mission. We're still trying to do this thing. All adults are still trying to do this thing. The difference is that students are not adults yet. They're adolescents. If you need to be caught up to the definition of adolescence and all of that, go to an earlier episode where I talk in detail about adolescence. But they're still trying to figure it out. They're still trying to figure out what life looks like and their identity and their autonomy and their belonging. And then you layer on top of that their spiritual development. Well, we want to help them grow to be mature, Jesus-following adults. Not just when they graduate from high school and are 18 years old, but when they fully individuate becoming an adult. We want to help them do that. To do, finally, how do we do that? Well, to connect them to the church family to an intergenerational body of Christ. That's the key. That is the key. That is the primary purpose of student ministry is to connect them with the larger church faster so that they're attending and serving and growing and worshiping together in an intergenerational body of Christ. It doesn't matter the size of your church. You could have 50 people meeting together or it could be up to thousands. It doesn't matter. They need to be integrated into the life of the body of the church as soon as possible. When? Right now. It doesn't matter if they're in seventh grade or 12th grade or they've graduated from high school. We want them to connect to the larger body of Christ as soon as they possibly can. And that doesn't mean when they graduate from student ministry and you hand them a diploma or give them a Bible. We want them to connect now. Let me say it again. Here's the primary purpose. We exist to help students become mature, Jesus-following adults who are connected to the church family. Well, what do you think? Leave your comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but it's much bigger, this vision, than just your little student ministry. It's bigger. It's connected with the whole church, and it starts today. Thanks again for tuning in. I look forward to hearing from you.